Okay. Okay. So, uh, hope hopefully everyone can hear me. So, welcome back. I think I know um, almost all of you from from our last session, uh, five hundred three. And so, I think uh, all of you, are, all of you took my five hundred three course. I think because I recognize all your names. So, if, if there's anyone new, let me know. But I think you're all returning from five hundred three, which is great. And so, uh, it, can everyone can hear me, right? Okay. And so it looks like everybody's uh, looks like everybody else is muted. And so you can stay. You can you're feel free to ask questions or or post to the chat. And so there's a chat. If you never used WebEx before, um, there's a chat feature, and I'll I'll post something here. Okay, so everybody should have seen that uh, to the chat feature, and so there's I guess there's uh, two ways to participate via WebEx. Uh, so I should be I'm sharing my screen, so you should, be, you should be able to see the Blackboard page at the moment, and you're welcome to unmute, unmute yourself and ask any questions. Just turn on your audio and ask questions uh, while we're going along, uh, or you can post anything to, to the chat feature, and I'll check the chat feature. Um, and, and respond to that as well. So if you have questions or comments uh, or want to say something or post something, either unmute yourself and just, just talk, uh, or you can post to the chat. So uh, if you've ne never used WebEx before, you'll probably get familiar with it pretty quickly. And let me pull up this email I sent. All right. And so I think uh, everyone is the same as when I sent this email. There's, there's 16 of you. Uh, which again are all, I believe, returning from 503. So that's great. Uh, we're all continuing. And okay, so we'll we'll go to the Blackboard page in a second. But I think uh, everyone got my first email with the information, the syllabus, and the expectation here is that here's the normal information uh, for our classroom once we go back to campus, which I expect in week three, and so. This meeting and the next meeting makes more, meetings one and two. Oh, someone's in the lobby here. Let me. Okay, so meetings one and two, including tonight and next Monday, uh, we'll do like this via WebEx, and then assume, assuming everything goes to plan with the university and the announcements, uh, we should be back on campus, and meetings three through eight. So our last six meetings will all be in the classroom that's that's on your uh, Laverne portal. And so same time, Mondays at six o'clock. And when we go back to campus in week three, uh, we'll be in the Landis Academic Center, 101A, okay? So first two meetings like this via WebEx, and then assuming everything goes to plan, we'll be back in our classroom, uh, which is this one, the one on your, on your, your schedule information the Landis Academic Center 101A, which I think is just really close to the last classroom. Okay, um, so there's that. Okay, um, so also I'll, I'll keep a, just in case there's any like, you know, if you, if you lose a connection or your Wi-Fi goes out or you have to step away for a minute, uh, I'm gonna record these two sessions. So we're, we're recording right now. And that way, I'll, I'll save the recording or maybe post it to YouTube or something just in case you need to see something again. Uh, so these WebEx sessions, including this one, and at the moment are being recorded. So we'll, we'll keep a recording of this. And that way, if you need to see it again, um, you can refer to it or if you lose your, your internet connection or something like that. So, uh, And then I'll, I'll figure out how to take attendance later, but I'll, I will take attendance uh, at some point via WebEx. Okay. So almost everyone is here, and everyone I'm sure has uh, access to the Blackboard page, and it looks like everyone got the, the WebEx information. So you can use that same link to get to both the meetings. All right, so I guess we'll just start going through, um, if there's no uh, introductory questions, we all know each other, and we can just start going to the Blackboard page. Um, and so, if the, again, if there's any questions, just go ahead and unmute yourself and or post anything to the chat. Okay. All right. Um, 
So here's the Blackboard page. We can go down Okay, maybe we'll start going through the syllabus. All right, so let's, if you go to the course syllabus section on the Blackboard page, uh, I'll pull up the syllabus and we'll kind of run through that real quick. Okay, so this is a continuation of um, MDA 503, so Data Mining and Predictive Analysis Part 2. All right, so initially we're going to use uh, the same software we used last time, which is the, the Enterprise Miner, and we're going to use a different software a, few, a little bit later in the course. We don't have to worry about that today, but I'll show you what, what we're going to be doing. Uh, but for today, today's software, is assuming everybody still has uh, access and can use uh, Enterprise Miner, uh, we'll get to that in a minute, and so hopefully that's that issue. There's no tech issues with that, but we'll we'll be using uh, Enterprise Miner in, in a little bit later to do the first exercise. Okay, so MDA 502. Um, we're gonna meet every Monday at six to nine, six o'clock, and again, starting week three, we'll be in this classroom. Okay, and same same phone number and same email you can you can reach me at. Uh, it's a you can look at the the course description and the course structure and the learning outcomes a little bit later. Uh, here are the all the course materials, which are the textbooks and the software, which are all available uh, on the Blackboard page or available through the university. So I'll, a link to all of these textbooks, which I'll show you in a minute, are on Blackboard. Okay, so we're going to use Enterprise Miner, um, which we used last semester, or last uh, term, whatever you want to call it. And we're also going to use SAS VIA, which we'll get to in a little bit, but we'll worry about that uh, at a later date uh, when we get back to campus. Okay, so the structure of the course is going to be a little similar to what we did last time in, in 503. So we'll have um, seven just normal Enterprise Miner homework assignments. Okay, those will be seven, six points each and seven of those. Uh, we'll have a couple case analysis like we did in 502. Okay, and then we'll have a take home final exam and then I'll just count um, attendance basically like one point every time you come for attendance. And so all of these should add up to 100. So this is the, the section of the, of the homework assignments. These are the two case analyses, 10 points each. This is the final exam, which will, which is a take-home final, and then just eight eight meetings, so one point each will give you eight points for attendance. Okay, same grading scale. So there's there's one take-home exam, uh, which we'll get to in the final week. Okay, we have a couple case analysis, and those are just like longer homework assignments. But we'll start the first one, I think, in week three. Okay, we'll have Enterprise Miner assignments and then uh, VIA assignments once we get to that software. And those will be like our normal homework assignments due weekly. Um, I'll take attendance at the end of class, probably. Okay, this. okay so here's the expected schedule, and this kind of syncs up to the, the course schedule on Blackboard. So today, um, the 31st, We'll do. We'll look at an intro to neural networks, and we'll look at how those networks can be incorporate some of the things we learned uh, last term, which are radio bias functions and some some other architecture for neural networks and network analysis. Okay, and there's some uh, uh, textbook reading I'll show you that you can do, and then we'll do an exercise and kind of get started with the software again. Uh, and then our first assignment will be due next Monday. Okay, so we'll start this together in class, but the assignment, the first one, or the first homework, will be due next Monday, um, and I'll show you how to submit that, but that'll be the first assignment due, and we'll get to the other uh, material week two, and so on. So this is the, the week one stuff we'll do today, week two, and then the schedule for all the weeks, uh, assuming we keep on track, is here, and then the final in week eight.
Okay. So our last meeting, which will hopefully be on campus, is March 21st. Okay. So that's a good little overview of the syllabus. Uh, any any questions so far of what's uh, what's expected or what what you have to do for the syllabus and I think that's clear, Professor, for me. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. Um, so there, here's the course syllabus. The lab notes are going to be, a lot of the, the homework assignments, including today's, are going to be in there. So we'll pull up the lab notes uh, in a little bit and get to that. Okay. And if you go to the next thing, these are all the textbooks, uh, links to the textbooks here textbooks one through five, so you can access those uh, from your Blackboard page. Okay, here's the weekly schedule. Um, starting with week one, we'll do today, and this is the, the resources and materials and homeworks and assignments and everything you need for each week. So we'll start with the week one stuff in a second. Okay, so this is the same enterprise monitor we used in, in, in MDA 503. So let me know if there's any issues with that, but um, in a minute, we'll... Oh, okay. okay, so in a little bit, we'll start doing some enterprise monitor uh, work again, but let me know if you're having any issues uh, relaunching or getting the enterprise monitor up and running, but it should be you know, the same, same thing as last time. Okay, well, this is the... A different type of software, also SAS, we're going to use in a little bit. Um, you don't have to do this at the moment, but you should have the same software, or the same login information through the university that you have for Enterprise Miner. Okay, and so we'll get to this at a later date, but here's the link to that, and we'll uh, we'll come to that later. But that that link is on the Blackboard page. Okay, and this is just the um, the, the sign in for your uh, SAS account through the university. Okay, so those those two links we'll get to later, but uh, should be the same login information that you use for Enterprise Miner. Okay, so this little section, Enterprise Miner, SAS VIA, and SAS Studio, uh, that's all the software we're gonna be using, and so everything should be accessible right there. And, and most likely you already have Enterprise Miner uh, downloaded or installed in your, your computer. Uh, I'll try to get your grades updated as we go along. So the first assignment, homework one, will be due next week. So we'll get to that once, once we start submitting assignments. Um, This is uh, some uh, like that. This is the same thing from from the last Blackboard page. Uh, if you want to get like an SAS certification, you can you can look into that information. And then what do we got here? Okay. And then I'm trying to put up little little study guides for the week. So this is for today. Okay, Professor, uh, would you please return to this uh, SAS certification? Yeah, yeah. So this one. Yeah. Yeah. If you click on here. Um, Here's like uh, the required exams and the different um, levels here. Is there any relation between this and MDA 580? I think they are talking about SAS certifications. Oh yeah, this is. I think this is the same one, right? Mm. Um, yeah, so I... Uh, yeah, I think this kind of incorporates um, all this, the SAS material we've been doing are, are going to finish at this, at this class. And so it looks like it's got Enterprise Miner. Um, what, what, was the th what was the thing we used for 502? That was um, SAS something else, right? Um, JMP. So it might incorporate some JMP, but this is, all, all of these um, certifications aren't, the, this is, none of this is required for this course, but uh, the information is here if you want to explore it more.
There you go. Yeah, so if, if you really want to get uh, certified for, for SAS, then here's uh, these are the exams and uh, stuff you want to pursue. But if you are, let, let me know and I'll, I'll see what I can, I'll see what you have to do exactly to get to get certified, to be a SAS certified data scientist. Okay, okay. Okay, um, then study guides. Okay, so if you open up the week one study guide, this one. All right, so here's what I uh, want us to do this week, or here's the, the assignments. Um, so assignment one, which will be due next Monday, and we'll start this together in a little bit. So there'll be two questions in Enterprise Viner in the lab notes. Uh, you'll submit, I'll have you guys submit the, the homework assignments to, via my email this time. So there'll be two uh, SPK files that you submit for this one, and then one Excel file with kind of a little a spreadsheet or chart. Okay, so that's the first assignment. You're going to submit these things in, in this format. And then uh, the work you'll do, you can do independently for the hybrid portion is just there's, there's a chapter or some chapter material I want you to read. And then some videos on Blackboard I'll show you that, that you can watch to get more familiar with the, the concepts here. Okay, so this is all the stuff I want you to kind of get completed by, for this week. And we'll, we'll start the homework assignment together in a minute here. Okay. Um, and then we also we have we have a little uh, PowerPoint before we get started. But okay, um, is everyone here? Let's see, almost everyone. Okay. All right. Uh, I think that's the gist of the Blackboard page and kind of how the setup will go. Um, we got the syllabus. I'll try to post our weekly study guides, and then the the weekly modules are there. And you'll submit your assignments uh, to my email, and I'll I'll tell you exactly what to submit. But uh, that'll be the the process there. So, any questions before we get started on today's lecture and, and assignments? All right. Um, Okay, so if you go to the weekly module, uh, this is week one, so let's let's start with the week one material. Okay, let me let me start with just a little. I'll run through some of the the key concepts in the PowerPoint, and we'll learn how to do some of those in Enterprise Miner, and then there's some textbook reading and some some videos that'll uh, help familiarize or, or reinforce those ideas. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna start learning about neural networks, and so this was in the uh, lab notes from 503, but we didn't do the neural networks or the network analysis, uh, so that was kind of saved for this class. All right, neural networks. Okay, so the idea here is that we're kind of we're that we're setting up networks uh, that kind of take on the structure of a brain, and so there's going to be signals, and the network kind of makes decisions and lets things uh, the, the threshold, and the the network uh, neural network can learn and adapt to new information. Okay, and we'll call these little these little nodes or decision making areas nodes because that's where the neural network makes this decisions and kind of uh, lets things go or doesn't let things go through the threshold. Okay, so it's the idea here is that you kind of uh, resemble the neurons in the actual brain and you'll have a network of inputs that gets uh, sent to some, some function and that function will decide if this input is 
going to go through the, thre through the threshold and determine the output or affect the output or not. Uh, but we'll set up different networks that get uh, sent through some, some function, and the function decides whether that uh, input will go into the output analysis or not. Okay, and all different weights. Okay, and there's different types of neurons. Um, this one here is the Macaulay pits, and it's modeled here where you, these are just different ways, oh, someone's in the lobby. Oh, someone else. Okay, there we go. Some of, some of you have to let into the, the the meeting, and some of you don't. I'm not sure why. Okay, well, I, I think everyone's here. We have uh, 17 participants, right? Um, and 16 people in the class, yeah? Perfect. Okay. So, um, let me do oh, someone just left. Okay. Um, next thing. All right. So this is the idea that we have a constant and we, it's, it's kind of set up like a, um, uh, it's kind of a combination of like binary and uh, like a like a what's oh, okay no no problem okay um, so it's kind of set up like a linear like a linear regression where you have a constant and then some um, slope coefficient or or parameters or co coefficients that, that affect the the dependent variable but uh, we're kind of using these the binary threshold, so it goes from negative one to one, not zero to one. And these inputs, okay, back in the meeting. All right, so now everyone's here. okay. So seven. Okay, great. Everyone's here. Perfect. So thank you all for joining. Um, and so it sets up these inputs that go through a th threshold and get assigned weights. And if they come out of this weighted sum, then they affect the output or not. Okay, and we have this thing called a perceptron, and it's a linear binary classifier. So it goes from, like I said, negative one to one is the uh, the range, and whether it goes gets assigned some weight or affects the outputs depends on what's what's uh, decided by this classifier. Okay. And th this this is from StatQuest. There's a nice video that explains this concept very well, uh, showing how, uh, if you recall that, we had an example last time for one of the concepts where we were trying to decide the dosage to get to give a drug, and if it was too little, it wasn't effective, and if it was too much, it was it was dangerous. So you want to decide the, the appropriate range of dosage that this drug can be effective, where it's, it has to be effective enough, but not too strong to, to hurt the patient. Okay, and so this will build on that concept and kind of set up a network of which the the appropriate doses can be defined, uh, where uh, too low is 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 not effective and too high is too dangerous. Okay, so linear perceptrons. All right. And so we're going to set up these um, inputs that, again, go through a threshold and kind of um, uh, determine if this is the appropriate uh, output based on what goes to the threshold here. And we have this uh, activation function. Okay, so there's different types of um, activation functions. that we'll, we'll look at lots of these in, in the analysis today in Enterprise Miner. So there's identity, exponential, Logistic, softmax, which is this one, okay, that'll be explained in uh, Enterprise Monitor and in, in the, the StatQuest video. Uh, logistic, which we've which we've done before in um, 502, okay, and then softmax. So again, these these ones are probably new, the softmax, but you're probably familiar with exponential, 
in logistic because we've done lots of that analysis. And we're going to return to the, uh, if you recall, that the Titanic data set today that uh, determined what, uh, what are your chances of survival based on a number of parameters. Okay, so we'll kind of build that into a network in one of today's homework assignments. Okay, so um, the first thing we're going to do here in these neural networks is to collect the arriving inputs, and there's different ways. Um, there's different, sorry, combination functions that we can use, which we'll try in uh, Enterprise Miner. There's a linear, which will just sum the weighted inputs, which is the default if we don't change it in the settings. Or there's the additive, which sums the inputs without weighting. Or there's equal slopes, which sums the weighted inputs with the same weight. Um, but depending on the, the analysis you use, you got to make sure there's no bias involved. Okay, so we'll try these types in network analysis in Enterprise Miner for some data sets. Oops. Okay, activation functions. So we did kind of a, we did a sigmoid uh, analysis last in, in 503 for, I, I believe, one of those uh, radial bias function questions. Okay, so it should be somewhat familiar, even though this is a, kind of a, a complicated concept, but we're trying to determine the threshold of which something is in the right range, so not too low and not too high. Okay, so these are what different activation functions look like um, and how they differ from, so you're familiar with the logistic, which is like, it goes from zero to one, where like if, if you were looking at the Titanic example again, uh, let's say one is survival and zero is you don't survive, uh, so there's different weight or different ranges on the on the function where if you get closer here, based on the parameters, you have a better chance of survival. And if you get closer to zero, you don't have a good chance of survival. But this is a little bit different where it kind of takes the same, you know, bending concept, but it goes from negative one to one as opposed to zero to one. Okay, uh, next thing. All right, so activation functions, and this is called a rectified linear unit, or this, the acronym or the short way is R-E-L-U, okay? And there's a, there's a really nice um, video that's posted on, on Blackboard where you can look at this concept, how it's explained. It's a little, it's a little complicated, but it's pretty useful in these uh, network analyses. Okay, and this, this ReLU is the most commonly used activation function, and we'll look at it uh, in comparison to sigmoid today in enterprise mind. Okay. Um, act more activation fu functions, the SOP plus method. Okay, and so we're gonna have um, output layers they go through a softmax activation function and give us different probabilities of how this goes or, or affects the uh, target that we set up. Okay, and uh, you might be familiar with this uh, problem. I think this was like someone in the lobby again. Okay, everyone's back again. Okay, so you might be familiar with this one. I think we, this was a question, or this example of this data was a, a, actually a question on the, the final exam for MDA 502, where you had uh, to determine what, what affects, what, what type of flower it is based on different features. Okay, and so based on different sepal winks, sepal widths, petal links, and petal widths, you could determine what chance this is, uh, one of these three types of irises. And based on these four inputs for the parameters, it looks like there's a good chance it would be this type, right? The iris septosa, not the other two types. Okay. All right. So here's the different types of activation functions again, um, including the the soft plus, the relu, the soft max. Uh, the identity, the exponential, 
gain the hyperbolic tangent, which we haven't got to yet. Um, so this is the, the general function. This is the range. And this is what kind of the, the function looks like graphically. OK, so uh, next thing is uh, assorted target distributions. OK, so let's talk about uh, network architecture and how we can set up these, these multi-layer perceptron, perceptrons. Sorry. OK, so here we go. Here are the input layers. And they go through a hidden layer and affect the output layer. Okay, and so um, the, based on the type of function or the, the method, it's going to assign different weights to the inputs if those are selected and how they affect the outputs. Okay, and see so these are different units um, and different weights that would be assigned to, to go into the output layer. Okay, so these networks will kind of set up uh, um, uh, a network of functions and perceptrons and uh, activation functions they, that are connected via network and they kind of they get sent around. Uh, the decisions get sent and if they, go, if they qualify to pass through the threshold, they go through and if they don't, they don't. Okay, so here's some... Uh, Nonlinear functions that could be developed with when the you're looking at more than one uh, variable that affects the the output or the the target. Okay, uh, so how many hidden units do you need? How many of these? Okay, do you need one, do you need two, do you need three? Uh, so that can be decided with a, a, a cutoff. So if we go back here, oops. Okay, so it could be twice the number of input dimensions, um, or it could be determined by some other criterion, uh, such as the, the SBC that you can choose. Okay, and so you have to either choose the default or some other method in which to choose uh, how many of the hidden, hidden units you need for your, your network analysis. Okay, what if you have more than one target, which we haven't really done before, but what if you have multiple targets, you can do that. Uh, okay, so setting up a network architecture with radio bias functions, and so we did, we did quite a few of radio bias function stuff in JMB. Uh, enterprise monitor last time, and I think we had a final exam question based on that. Okay, so uh, a little rehash of radio bias functions, and so it's al alternative to MLP. MLP was the, the multi-layer perceptron method we talked about. Okay, and so you can set up a network of radio bias functions that are kind of the same uh, same idea. So set up a network, and it goes through these thresholds. And if it um, uh, if it gets you know, act, if it passes through this activation function, then it, then it goes through the threshold to the output. Okay. All right. So different types of combination functions you can use in your radial bias function. So x radial is unequal height and width. So see how they're, uh, they're, and we'll, we'll try all these methods and you'll see the difference, but this is just uh, visually what they look like. So different heights and widths, um, equal height and width. So same, see how the, the distribution is the same height and width, uh, equal width, okay, but different height, equal height, but different width or equal volume. Okay, so all these types of radio functions we'll, we'll try out in Enterprise Monitor. Okay. Um,
right, so again, showing up, showing how to set up the network uh, using radial bias functions, and this is what um, the network structure would look like, where the inputs go through threshold and affect the output based on the, the type of uh, radial bias function. Okay, and so you want to, um, like it says in theory here, the, a normal radial bias function are universal approximators, but they're often ineffective multivariate estimation functions or function estimators. And so that's because they can be localized around the center. So you kind of have, um, you want to make sure it's not just choosing like the median and it's choosing it based on oh, someone's. Okay, there we go. Okay, so you want to make sure it's not just choosing like a, a median or an average. It's actually making a decision that uh, in this threshold it's high enough and beyond this threshold it's 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 too high. Okay, and you can do you can choose a, a normal normalized radial bias function. Uh, what this does is it imposes the constraint that these hidden unit activations add to one. So if you make sure you account for all your, your observations, then uh, that can kind of take take care of this localized effect problem. All right. Um, so here's a radial bias function using the softmax and setting up a network here visually. OK, and we're going to do this a little example in a, in a minute in the lab notes uh, and compare these different types of architectures in particular, these ones here. Okay. Um, All right, let's go uh, back to the study guide. All right, so I have this open, but again, uh, on Blackboard under study guides, they're just one for this week for now. But if you open up this one, uh, this is the, the work or the material for the, that you need to do for this week. Okay, so the the assignment you're going to turn in next Monday via email. Uh, we'll start here in a second, and we're going to be using Enterprise Miner. What we're going to do the first question is going to be looking at uh, assorted target distributions in the lab notes. And, and the second question is going to be comparing those architectures we just talked about and the different types of radial bias functions. And so you have two SPK files and one Excel file to turn in. And then once we, once we Get, get a good start on that, or maybe finish it. Uh, I'll show you what I want you to read in, in the online textbook, and the videos I want you to watch to, to kind of reinforce these, these neural networks. Okay, so let's start. Um, let's turn I'm gonna mute one of your, one of you here. All right. Uh, okay. Let's let's start by just um, firing up Enterprise Miner, and that way, if there's any issues with that, I can try to troubleshoot those. But hopefully, uh, we can all launch Enterprise Miner and sign in and, and everything. So let me let me go ahead and do that. And so, if you have um, your link or your program for your Enterprise Miner, why don't we go ahead and get that started?
All right. Um, so first, and if you have a, if you ever run Enterprise Miner in a little bit, you might have to update Java. I think I had to do that a few days ago. Um, but other than that, it should it should still work. So at this point, just uh, let me know. If, is anyone having issues just launching or signing into Enterprise Miner? Is everyone here? I think the whole class is here. Yeah, all sixteen people. So let's just take a minute here, and if you if you have any issues uh, getting Enterprise Monitor to you know up and running, then let me know. Uh, and hopefully there's no issues, and we can do some exercises. But uh, let me know in the next few minutes if you have problems get, getting on the Enterprise Monitor. Okay, so everyone is uh, everyone's good on signing an enterprise miner. Any any issues before we we start doing some uh, examples together? Okay. Okay, and it, actually, if there are any issues, um, like a, like we're, we're recording this session, so if you miss something or you know you get signed off or Enterprise Miner uh, has to crash or something, then you can always uh, refer to the video. But um, let's go ahead, and it seems like there's no issues, uh, which is great. And it seems like we can just start doing the, the first assignment together. So why don't we go ahead and do that? Okay, so number one, assignment number one, uh, the first one is the modeling assorted target distributions, uh, and that's a lab notes, pages 26 to 35. Okay, so let me pull those up. Um, and so I have, I'll, I'll share my enterprise miner screen once we get going because it's easier to see. And so I, I printed out the um, uh, the steps, and so it'll be easier just to do it that way. But let me just show you where what we're looking at. So where's the uh, course syllabus and lab notes? Okay, and so first question is um, pages twenty six to thirty five. Okay, so this is the one we're going to do first. Um, and we'll, we'll go through it together, but um, we're going to look at the, um, I think we did use this data set or something similar in uh, MDA 502, where we're looking at uh, how other variables affect um, your oxygen consumption, which is a measure of how, how fit you are. So these different things like your, your, your pulse, uh, your runtime, stuff like that affect your uh, oxygen consumption. So let me just run through this one. Um, so the neural network is something we're going to use here in SAS, uh, and so we're going to we're going to do to illustrate the complexity and how it works. Um, 
we're gonna we're gonna set it up using this data set, and the data set here is the fitness data set. Uh, so we have 31 fitness club members who participated in a 1.5 mile run, and the resource researchers were interested in determining when, whether any uh, or more of the several continuous measurements help predict the member's oxygen consumption, which is a, which is a proxy for the fitness level. Okay, so we have these different variables in the data set. Um, and I think we've used this data set before, but age is the age of the fitness member. Gender is the gender of the fitness club member. Maximum pulse or max pulse uh, was the member's maximum pulse rate during the run, the 1.5 mile run they, they did. Name, which doesn't go into the analysis, but this is the first name of the fitness club member. Okay, this is the target. Oxygen consumption, uh, a measure of oxygen transfer, or uh, a proxy for fitness level. Performance, which is another measure of overall fitness. Rest pulse, which is the member's pulse rate when at rest. Run time is the time in minutes it took to run the 1.5 mile run. Run pulse is the member's pulse rate at the end of the run. And weight is the weight in kilograms of the fitness club member. So this is the target, but these are variables that could affect the target. Okay, so we'll start doing this in Enterprise Miner uh, by doing a, a new a new diagram. Okay, back to this. All right, so again, uh, if, if you have any questions while we're doing this, go ahead and uh, you can take your sound, put your sound on and, and ask a question or you can post to the chat. But let's uh, let's get started by making a, a new project, yeah? So file, new, project. Okay, and then hit next. All right, and we can call this um, Fitness, okay, F-I-T-N-E-S-S, -S, Fitness, and we can browse to find our file that we can hopefully all get to, all right, in the E drive, okay, just go down to your name or your, your folder, don't open it, but choose it, right, there's me, and choose yours and just hit OK, and then hit Next. Oh, I already made this. Okay, let me give it a different name. Um, fitness 2. Okay, so give your project name Fitness or Fitness 2. Choose your E drive directory. And then hit Next. And Next. And Finish. And that should uh, set up a new project there for you. Now, let's, uh, let's set up a new diagram. So we can do file, new, diagram. All right, and you can call this, um, in the little lab notes, it says call this assorted targets. Okay, you can call your diagram assorted targets and hit OK. Okay, and then we're gonna we're gonna get a new data set. So file, new, data source. Okay, next. Okay, so we're going to go to the, um, oh, yeah. okay, so we're going to go to browse, okay, 
Okay, so in this one, the DM NN41, we're gonna choose the fitness data set. There it is, and hit okay. Okay, click next. Okay, then next. Next. Okay, so we're change a few things before we get started. So let's change um, the role of all the input, the role of all the input variables except for performance to rejected, and let's change the role of oxygen consumption to target. So we want to do this is rejected. This is rejected. Okay, this is rejected. This is rejected. Uh, oxygen consumption is target. Um, performance is input, so leave that. And then all the other ones are rejected. Performance will be the same? Yes, performance, input. performance will stay as input, yeah. Okay. All the others, red pulse, blah, 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 they're all, all rejected. Yep, that's correct. Okay, and then... Yeah, okay. So age, age, gender, max pulse, and name, all rejected. Uh, oxygen consumption is target. Performance is input. And all and rest pulse, run time, run pulse, and weight are all rejected. I think these can be set the same. Yeah. Okay, so make those changes all in the roll column. So rejected, rejected, rejected. Oxygen consumption is target. Performance is target. And then the rest are rejected. Okay. Performance is input, isn't it? Yeah, sorry, performance is input. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so it should look just like this. All right, now let's hit next three times. And then we'll hit finish. All right, and then uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and start by just dragging the, uh, the fitness data set onto the diagram like this. All right, so everybody, uh, everybody good so far? Getting it, the data set up? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Okay, let's let's add a SAS code node um, from the utility tab. So utility tab, SAS code and connect it like that. Okay, and I know, let's see, we're, we need to, um, what do we need to do? We need to get uh, an SAS file uh, from Blackboard. So let me just show you before we do the step. Go back to Blackboard. And if you go to weekly module uh, in week one and hybrid online, you want to download this uh, SAS programs zip file and just uh, you know put it somewhere on your computer. So just download it and save it somewhere. Question is, which ones are not rejected? 
oxygen consumption is target, uh, performance is input, and then all the other ones are rejected. So like, um, just like this here. Okay, you're welcome. Okay, so navigate here, uh, weekly module, week one, hybrid online, and then um, download this SAS programs file, the zip file. Um, and so it should look, once you download it somewhere, it should look uh, like this with all these SAS files. The one we want for today's analysis, you can just like co copy and paste it or drag it out is this one. Um, C2 S1 D1. So C2 S1 D1. Yeah. Okay. So um, download the zip file. And these, these other files we don't need for today, but this is the one we need C2 S1 D1. So either like copy and paste it or just put it somewhere where it's out of the zip file because we need to um, uh, put it into the code editor. So download the SAS program files from Blackboard and navigate and find C2 S1 D1 and just put it somewhere like I put it in my assignment one folder. And so you want to have this, uh, this C2 S1 D1 SAS file somewhere where you can find it and upload it to, to enterprise mode. Now, all right, so uh, I know where mine is. It's right here, C2S1D1. Okay, let's go back to, let's go back to Enterprise Miner. And let's click on the SAS code node that we got connected. And let's click on, The, the code editor ellipsis, so SAS code, and then code editor, click on that to launch that. Professor, I think your voice has gone like for 10 seconds. Would you oh, please repeat? Yeah, yeah, sorry. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, yeah, I might have, I might have turned away from the, the, the microphone. Okay, so we're back to Enterprise Miner. Okay. And click on the SAS code node, and then click on the code editor ellipsis right here under properties. Under train or, or, or properties? Well, it's, it's under, under the train property. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I think there's, there's only one, uh, the only option where you can choose the code editor. Yeah. Okay. All right. So it should take you to this training code, code node, right? And yes. you should, let's, the training code should be the default. So we're on, you got the training code, you got the code editor thing, you have the training code and we're in training code. So make sure it's on this top one, training code, code node. Okay. And what we're going to do is um, open up the code that we just saved. So you can right click down here in the training code window and you can choose open and you got to find the file you just you found uh, the s the the sas file so i put mine here so wherever you put that c2 s1 d1 file find that and click it and hit open and that should put the code from that file into this training code it should look something like this uh, excuse me, what is open? Open. Where's open? Oh, you just right click and. Um, okay. Open. Yeah. Okay, open. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, and if Ed, I know there were some problems with this with Max, and so if that doesn't work, 
Uh, the other the other option, which is completely the same thing, is just open up the SIS file and copy and paste the the code. Okay. Like that. So if that open process didn't work, you can just copy and paste it and paste it into that code editor window, and that should also work. Uh, if the 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 other process didn't work. Oops. Okay, so we should have um, the training code, the file from that, that training code SS file right here in the training code. You should see the code right there. Um, oh, so let's see. Okay, right. So I think, Dan, Dan, you had the same problem with um, this before. So can you try to, to um, copy and paste it? Oh. Oh, you can't open the file. You can't open this file? Yeah, it says um, the SAS license is expired. Oh. Um, but you can, I mean, you're, you're using Enterprise Monitor, but this, you can't open this um, SAS yeah. file? Oh, interesting. Okay. Um, what if I can... Um, can you copy paste the code in the chat? I mm, think that'll work. Or, or email? Yeah, let me try to let me try to do um, let me try some other. Let me see what I can. Um, let me see if I can put it like. Okay, can you see if that works? Uh, I put it under, so on Blackboard, I just added it as, as attachments. So if you go to study guides, and there's the file right there, S, C2S1D1. Uh, see if you can open it or, or download it. I, well, I can also try to paste it in chat. I'll, I'll see if that works. But I'm not sure if it, I think the spacing might get messed up. I'm sorry, where is study guide? Oh, Under so, yeah. So, uh, no, so on Blackboard, if you scroll down, there's like course tools, all this stuff, and then you should see study guides under, yeah, like under the certificate thing. Right here. Do you see it? Um... Nope, I don't have that on my blackboard. Um. So I have syllabus and announcements, course text, weekly module, um, enterprise, SAS studio, course tools, library link, library guides, my grades, um, SAS global certificates. Oh wait, sorry. <laughs> you have it? Okay. Yep. <clears throat> um, no, I can't download it. It says my license for J JMP expired. Uh, okay, let me see if I can. I have the file, I just can't open it. OK. 
Okay. I don't know if that's going to work, but I copied and pasted it there. Okay. Maybe I can, what if I save it as something else? Okay. Do you want to try that one? Okay. I I resaved it, but I don't know if that's going to do any good. But it's just a it's just a text file. I don't know. Or like a. It's the same thing. Mm. Okay, this might work. Let's try this. Okay, so now now I just posted it as a text file, so it shouldn't have any um, SAS restrictions. See if you can, it should just open it like if you get a study guide and click on it. Uh, it should okay. Open it in a separate window, yeah. Yeah, I got it. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Um, now, so let's what what you can do, I think, is just cop, copy and paste it into the. Yeah, I just did. Oh, did it work? Okay. Oh. Uh, yeah, so copy you. and paste it into the the training code. Yeah, welcome. 
Okay, and then so either um, either uh, upload or open the file like I did before, or copy and paste the code. Either way, it should be the same from that text file. And once you do that, just hit the save button. Okay, and then close it. Uh, and just double. I'm just going to double check. If you click on the SAS code and click on the code editor. And it should have that code right there under training code. Um, so one of those two methods should work. Um, does it? Does anyone not have the code now? So it seems like everyone's got it. The lab notes here describe the code a little bit. Okay, so we got the C2S1D1 code in there. Okay, and so it tells you what's what's going on. There's different um, methods that's, that are going on. So there's the Here's the target. Target D. Okay, and then there's the, the gen mode procedure right here. Okay, the next part in the code is the Poisson target. Okay, and then there should also be a gamma distributed target. There should also be a multinomial target, which is a logit model. And there should be a uh, ordinal target, which is a logit model as well. Okay, and then it should have, so it should have all those things there. So it's, a, it's got a description and the different methods that it's gonna employ. Uh, and then that should be good. So again, make sure that's saved and close that. Okay. Then we're going to run that SAS code. And so you can write, this might take a little bit, but if you right click it and click run and click yes with, with the code. Okay. So when that's done running, you can get the results. So right click it and go to results. Okay. Then uh, let's double check that we got this the same results. So if you go to line, just, I think step 18 on the. Got that. Yeah, I think we're here. Okay, so if you go to line 58, right there, okay, you should see these uh, likelihood, the analysis of maximum likelihood estimates, and just double check that your estimates are similar. So it should look like the printout. You should have uh, exactly what I have here. And the estimates, the standard errors. Okay, and double check like the chi-square numbers. I can't see it there clearly. Oh, you can't see it? Yeah, I can't see it. It's, uh, it's a bit small. Oh, okay. Uh, well, it looks... It should you, can, look... you, can, you can just say it or voice it, then we can... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, it should look like this, but let me just, we can double check if you, okay. Um, so, you're, let's see, like the intercept right here should be 34.5487. Uh, yeah. And we can double check a few more things. This should be 1.9466. Clear. 
Yeah, and, and this should be 314.99. Which one is it? The, the, the walled chi square? Yes, yes. Okay, yes. all right. So it looks like we're okay. Yes. Okay, let's go to line 105. Next step. Just double checking things. Okay, let's just double check a few of these. Um, this one should be 3.5865. Yes. Okay. Yep. And let's 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 double check the chi squared because it's a big number. The chi squared over here should be uh, 1,685.60. Correct. All right. Okay. Next step, let's scroll to one one fifty two. Mm. There. All right. Let's double check a few things just to make sure it's. Uh, I mean, it seems like at this point we we got it correct, but uh, the estimate for the intercept. What? Uh, okay. The estimate for the intercept should be three point five eight. 3.5845. All right, mm -hmm. and the walled chi squared should be 7,701.31. Correct. Okay, so the same results you should see in the, the lab notes, all right? Okay, and then step 21, scroll down to 227. 227. There we go. Uh, now this one's a little bit different, but we should have two, this one should have two intercepts. All right, so double check that each of your intercepts. So this one should be negative 2.5276, and this one should be negative 7.4648. Okay. So same thing as step 21 in the lab notes. All right. Step 22, let's check one last thing on um, line 309. Okay, we should have, again, two intercepts, so intercept 2 and intercept 1. Uh, intercept 2 in line 314 should be negative 6.3897. And intercept 1 should be negative 4.2804. And it should be exactly the same you see in the lab notes. All right. Okay. All right. So if everyone's got that, those results, you can go ahead and close the, close the results. Close that. Okay, so now we're on step 24 in the uh, the lab notes. All right, so everybody's good so far. Okay. All right, let me let me uh, I'm going to use the restroom real quick. I'll be back in like 1 minute and then we'll continue. Uh, and we're on step 24. So Okay, right here. So I'll be right back in 1 second.
Okay. All right. Everybody's still here. So let's continue. So we're here in step 24. And let me go back to the Enterprise Miner. Oops. Okay. Let's, uh, step 24, let's add a metadata node and connect it to the SAS code node. All right. So where's metadata? Okay, so under utility, metadata, let's put that right there and connect the SAS code node to that. All right. Okay, and then in the metadata properties, in the variable section, uh, click the little ellipsis next to train. So metadata properties variable and then click on the train button right there. All right. Now let's let's just change the level of target D to nominal. All right. So um, New level for target D is nominal. And so see that target D, new level is nominal. And that, that's all you got to change. Okay, and then hit, uh, click, hit the OK button. Okay, then let's run the metadata. So step 28 is right click metadata and run it. Okay, there we go. So, so we don't need the results yet, but um, let's add a neural network, step 30. So under the model tab right there, uh, you can find a neural network node, this one, neural network, and drag that down there. And let, let's connect that to the program, uh, connect metadata to neural network like that. Okay. And then so click on your neural network tab or neural network node and click the ellipsis next to variables in the train section. So train there's variables uh, and then click on this Okay, <clears throat> sorry. <clears throat> and then let's let's set the U status of target D to no. Okay, so this is pulled up, and then here's use. Here's target D. Let's change that from yes to no. Uh, so only change is target D's use is now set to no. And I hit OK. All right, then you can click the ellipsis next to network. Okay, so neural network. Here's network under train. Click on that. And let's, uh, let's change the architecture property to generalized linear model. So property architecture, generalized linear model. 
and that's it. I hit OK. Okay, then uh, let's run this. Right click, run, yes. Okay, so once that's done, you can get the results. Uh, right click neural network after it's done running, and then click on results. Okay, and then let's, let me, let's, let's maximize the output section. Okay, and let's double check a few things. If you go to line, uh, this is step 36. If you go to line 118, Okay, so let's let's double check that our, our estimates are the same. Let's double check that uh, line one twenty four the performance oxygen consumption estimate is zero point two two six four four six, and for line one twenty five the bias oxygen consumption estimate is thirty four point five four eight seven four five. Okay, did we get that? Yeah, that's okay. correct. Okay, perfect. Okay, let's close that. Okay, uh, now, what's next? Okay, step 38. On this this one, um, let's click on neural network again. The node, and let's uh, let's click on the ellipsis next to network. All right, might need to do this. Okay, neural network, and then open up network, right here. So neural network properties, and then network. And let, let's change the target layer error function property from default to Poisson. So target layer error function. Change that to Poisson. Okay, Poisson distribution. So target layer error function is Poisson distribution. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then um, because you don't there this distribution is not defined for negative, uh, like it says in step 40, you want to change the target layer activation from function property from default to exponential, so it's non-negative. So target layer activation function right there, that should now be exponential. Okay, so all we changed in, in the network properties are target layer error function is Poisson and target layer activation function is exponential. All right, then let's hit okay. And let's uh, let's run that again. All right, then uh, right click it when it's done running and get get the results.
okay, and, and maximize the output uh, panel again so we can check something. And step 43, go to line 118. Okay, and let's check our, our estimates. Um, so line 124. Line 124 for the performance oxygen consumption. The estimate should be 0 0.004730. And for the two bias oxygen consumption estimate, line 125, that should be 3.586540. Yes, we got this. Okay, perfect. Okay, um, close that. Okay, we'll try a different method, the gamma. So, okay, so click on, well, let's, we need to get the ellipsis back. So click on the data set, then this. All right, then on neural network. Click on the network ellipsis like that. So neural network properties, network. Okay, and now let's change target layer error function to gamma. So target layer error function, that's now gamma. Okay, so target layer error function set that to gamma. Okay, and this uh, this is non-negative as well, but we've already set this to exponential, so you don't need to change that, but uh, just double check that target layer error function is gamma, and target layer activation function is exponential to uh, get rid of all the negatives, and hit okay. All right, we know what's coming next. Let's run that. Run the gamma. Okay, then uh, get the results once it's, it's done running. Okay, let's again maximize the output window and double check uh, our conclusions or our results and go to line 118 again. Okay, and here we go. So on line 124, the performance oxygen consumption estimate should be 0 0.004766. And the bias oxygen consumption estimate should be 3.584453. Correct. We got this. Okay, perfect. All right, great. Let's close that. Okay, so a few more. Um, types of neural networks. Okay, so let's uh, reset. So fitness, assorted targets, and click on neural network again. I believe this is step 50. Okay, now open up under, under neural network, properties, under train, open up the variables, ellipsis, like that. Okay, let's change the use of target D to yes. Okay, and oxygen consumption to no. Okay, so you flip those. Uh, oxygen consumption use is now no. 
and target D use is now yes. All right. So this is no, this is yes, everything else is the same, and hit uh, OK. OK, let's, under Neural Network Properties, let's open up uh, Network again. And let's change the Target Layer Activation Function and the Target Layer Air Function property back to default. So target layer uh, activation function default and target layer error function default. Okay, so basically all these target layer things should be default. So make those switches there and hit OK. Okay, let's run this one. Okay, let's, uh, let's get the results again. So right click after the run is complete and results. Okay, and maximize the, maximize the output window. Okay, and let's scroll down. Um, this is step 55. Uh, so scroll down to 157. Okay, and let's double check uh, a couple of our estimates. So line 167, the estimate for bias target D2 uh, should be negative 7.464316. And for line 168, the estimate for uh, bias target D1 should be negative 2.52. 6960. We'll go with that. Yes. Okay, so this one has two linear equations with um, two intercepts and two slopes. Okay, let's close that. All right, so I think we got one or two more steps here in this, this, this part. Um, step 57. So let's click on now, click on metadata and click on under the properties panel, click the ellipsis next to train in the variable section. So metadata, let's click on that and this and metadata. So train variable, here it is. So properties, uh, metadata, properties, variables and hit the train button there. Okay, let's change the new level of target D to ordinal. Uh, so new level of target D is not nominal anymore, it is ordinal. Okay, which ranks, it's a, like it's, it's a ranking now, like highest, lowest, okay, so it's a rank. So change the target, the new level of target D to ordinal. Uh, okay. Okay, let's run, go to the neural network, uh, the last part of the the network and right click and run it again.
Okay, and then get the results once once it's done running. All right, maximize the output window there. Okay, let's double check line 161. Okay, and this one's going to have a uh, two intercepts and uh, just one um, estimate. Okay, so these are there's two intercepts, but they have the same slope for the equations. Uh, so let's double check these. Uh, line 168, the estimate for the bias target D2 should be negative 6.383805. Uh, and the one for bias target D1 should be negative 4.274702. Yeah, we got, we got this. Okay. All right, close that. Okay, so we'll save this in a second. Um, we're, we're almost done. We're done with the just about done with the first homework question. Okay. Okay, yeah, so we're up to this point, and there's a nice little summary chart of what you did with the different methods, intercepts, and the neural procedures and what your um, estimate should be that we, we double checked. Okay. So the summary of the analysis is on page 30, 35 of the lab notes. And let's, if we've got this for, let's, let's save this, uh, let's save this and then we'll save it as an SPK file. Okay, so if you can save it in this format, uh, it'll be easier for me to uh, find your name and, and what it is. So if you want to save it, um, first name, last name, assignment one fitness. So first let's, okay, so we got this right. And let's right click ne the neural network, the last node, right click that and let's do create model package. Okay, and if you can do it in this format, it'll be easier for me to, to grade them and, and organize them. So you can either copy and paste this or just type it, but um, okay, so your model package name and also your SPK file would be like, uh, put your first name and your last name and then assignment one fitness, you can leave that, um, but just fill in your name so I know what it who you are and uh, what assignment it is, and hit OK. Okay, and then you can, like before, you can save that as an SPK file to turn in. So right click the model package and click on Save As. Okay, and it's going to save it as SPK file, which is the default, and you can save it as the same format, so wherever, uh, that you can email me later. Okay, so your first name, last name, then assignment one, and then the data set is fitness, and it should save that as an SPK file. All right, and that's one of the that's the first file you're going to turn in for the, the first assignment, which is due. Uh, if you need more time, it's due next Monday, and you're going to email that to me.
Okay, so everybody good on the, the first the first question? Okay, so let's go ahead and do the next one, yeah? All right, so we did question number one, which was modeling assorted target distributions. Uh, and now the next one is, is um, comparing architectures, lab notes 58 to 62. Okay, so this one, we're going to revisit the Titanic data set that you're probably familiar with from, I don't know if we used it in 503, but we definitely used it in 502 to look at uh, the factors or variables that, that affect or determine or help your probability of survival or not surviving. Okay, so this data set from the Titanic in 1912, which was saying is the age variable is the age of the passenger in years. The, this is the class, so first class, second class, third class ticket. This is the fare, fare is ticket. Gender is the gender of the passenger, male or female. Uh, name, which doesn't affect anything, is the passenger's name. And this is the target, okay, which is survived. And one is survived, and zero is died or didn't survive. And so we're trying to look at different ways or different uh, variables that, that increase your chances of survival. So we'll revisit this data set um, for this one. Okay, so I'll start with part A, uh, but let's go ahead and, and open up a new project, assuming we're done with the first one. Okay, so everyone's got this one. You saved it as a, a model package in an SPK file, and it should be saved in your, uh, like when you open up Enterprise Monitor, it should be in your, your recent documents, it's already saved, but let's do, okay, uh, enterprise miner, file, new project, next, Okay, um, you can call this one Titanic. And I believe I already have this name, so I'm gonna call it Titanic 2. And then uh, choose your, your folder, so browse, E drive, and choose your folder, but don't, don't open it, and hit OK. Titanic in your E drive folder, next, and next, and finish. Okay, uh, let's set up a new diagram. So file, new diagram. Uh, let's call this step B, uh, call this diagram exercise 2.2. Okay, exercise 2.2, .2. okay. All right, then let's open up the Titanic data set. So file, new, data source, um, next, browse. And under the same library, the, the DMN and 41, you want to choose Titanic. There it is. And hit OK. Play, and let's click Next. Okay, so we got six variables and 1,309 observations or, or people. 
Okay, next. Let's click on here, let's click on the advanced little button and click on next. All right, let's change a few things. Let's change the role of survived to target. That's what we're looking to, to determine or predict. Let's change the role of name to ID. And let's change the level of class to ordinal. So just a ranking. So level of class to ordinal. Okay. So level of class is ordinal. Ordinal. Yeah, ordinal, like O-R-D-I-N-A-L. Ordinal. So level of class is ordinal. Um, the name, the role of name is ID. And the role of survived is target. So those three changes. Ordinal. ID target. All right, then you're going to click next a bunch of times and then finish. All right, then we're going to go ahead and uh, drag our, our Titanic data set or data node, whatever it's called, and into the uh, working space. Okay, into the model diagram. All right, everybody's good so far with the got the data set loaded. All right. Okay. Um, Now, we're going to do a bunch of different neural network tabs uh, and rename them and do different different types. So we're going to, and then we'll do a model comparison at the end. Okay, so there's a bunch of steps, but we're kind of doing the same uh, technique and just changing the, the proceed or changing the model multiple times. So step K, at a neural network node under the model tab. So model tab, neural network, right? There, drag that down and connect it. Okay, now click on the ellipsis next to network. Right, so for neural network, network, click on that. And let's change the architecture to generalize least squared. The first option. Okay, property architecture is generalized, sorry, not generalized least squared, generalized linear model. So architecture is generalized linear model. And hit OK. Okay, and let's let's rename it because we're gonna have a bunch of different neural networks and we gotta identify them. So if you right click neural network and rename it as GLM, oops, okay, so GLM for generalized linear model, and hit OK. So we're going to do this a bunch of times. We're going to add a neural network and connect it to the data set and rename it based on the property or the type of neural network we choose, but that's the first one. Keep track a little bit here. Um, Okay, let's let's add another neural network. Put it up there, connect this to the data set.
Okay, let's rename this one. Uh, right click it, rename. Let's call it uh, MLP. And hit okay. Okay, this is the default. So if you like, if you clicked on it um, and chose network, you can see it's already. This is for multi-layer perceptron, which is the default. So you don't need to change it. But I'm just showing you what the name uh, corresponds to. So this architecture is multi-layer perceptron, which is the default. So MLP is is stands for multi-layer perceptron. So you don't need to change it, but just double check, or just double check. You can just see that when you click on it under properties under network, it, the architecture should be the default of multi-layer perceptron and just hit cancel or okay. All right, um, let's do it again. Let's add another neural network connected. And let's let's right click, rename, and let's call this um, O R B O R B F E Q. Okay, so O R B F E Q, and hit OK. All right, so for this one, click on the, the ellipsis for network. And let's change this method, uh, or the architecture. Let's change it to ordinary, ordinary radial <clears throat> equal width. This one, ordinary radial equal width. And hit OK. So this is ordinary radial bias, the ORB is for ordinary radial bias function, ORBF, and then equal is for equal with. So, uh, excuse me, Professor. Yeah. So yep. I, want to, uh, I want to ask uh, uh, which values uh, we change uh, at uh, MLP. I missed that, sorry. Oh, no, oh, so that one, we didn't change anything. So, but that's a good question. So for MLP, uh, uh -huh. it was the default, but if you click on it, MLP, and then click on network, it should be multi-layer perceptron in the architecture, so that's oh, the one. Okay. Yeah, and that's what the MLP is for. But it was a it was a default, so you didn't need to change it at all. Oh, okay, thank you. Yep, you're welcome. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so we've got three of them. We got some more. Um, generalized linear model, multi-layer perceptron, and ordinary radial bias function equal equal widths. All right, let's go to the next step. So we're going to set all these up and run a model comparison and, and look at the results uh, after we set it up. Another one. Um, neural network, drag it down. Let's connect that to the Titanic data set. Uh, let's rename this one. Right click uh, Neural Network 4, rename as ORBFUN. All right, uh, ORBFUN. Okay, then uh, for ORBFUN, let's click on Network uh, Ellipsis. And let's change this to ordinary radial unequal width. So the, the architecture is ordinary radial unequal width. And there it is. OK. So this is ordinary radial bias function unequal, uh, as opposed to the ordinary radial bias function equal. That's what these, these uh, names stand for. 
OK, so I think we have four more to add. Then we'll do a model comparison. So next, uh, next step, step Z, is add another neural network. Connect it there. Um, let's right click this one and rename it. And let's call this one NRBFEH. Okay, NRB, FEH, okay. Okay, for this one, uh, same thing under properties, click on the network ellipsis. And let's change this architecture to normalized radial equal height. All right, normalized radial equal height height. Okay. Okay, so normal normalized radial bias function equal height, eh, there it is. Okay, uh, step dd. Uh, we got three more, three more um, uh, neural networks. Uh, so neural network, drag it down there, number six. Let's connect that. Um, right click it, rename. Let's call it NRB, FEV. Okay, NRB. FEV. Okay. And for this one, under properties, click on network ellipsis. And let's change this one to normalized radio equal volumes. All right, normalized radio equal volumes and hit OK. All right, so normalized radio bias function equal volumes for the EV. Uh, step HH is another neural network like that. Connect it. Um, let's right click this one and rename it. Uh, NRB FEW. Okay, NRB FEW. Okay, and then for this one, under Properties, click on Network and the Architecture is Normalized Radio Equal Width. Okay, Normalized Radio Equal Width and hit OK. So Normalized Radio Bias Function Equal Width, that's what the EW stands for. Okay, um, next step, double L is another neural network down here, connected. All right, let's right click this one, rename, uh, NRB FEQ, okay. NRB FEQ. Okay. And then under properties, network ellipsis. And let's choose normalized radio equal width and height for architecture. Okay, normalized radial equal width and height. Okay. So normalized radial bias function equal, or everything's equal. If 
Okay, one more. Um, neural network tab, drop it down there. Connect number nine. Let's rename this one. Let's call it NRBFUN. Okay, NRBFUN. Okay, and let's, uh, under properties, network ellipsis, let's change this one to normalized radial, unequal height and width architecture. Normalized radial, unequal width and height. Okay, so normalized radial bias function, unequal. Okay, so we should have nine of them, uh, if, you, if you're counting. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, all different types of uh, neural network architectures that we're going to compare. Okay. Um, now let's, let's drag a model comparison node under the access tab. So click on access, not access, assess, and then uh, model comparison. Drop that down here. Okay, we're going to connect all of these neural networks to it, all nine of them. So you can start just doing that. Uh, one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so it should look like this here, or similar to this, a big little spider web thing. So you got the Titanic data set connected to all of these different model architectures of neural networks and all the neural network nodes connected to the model comparison. So these should all, the data should go through these different types and we're gonna compare them all at the same time. Uh, and if you got this set up, right click model comparison and run it and click yes. Might, might take a little while. Okay, uh, after that is, is done running, you can right click it and choose results. All right, and then if you open up the, the output window, this one. Okay, and so what you wanna do is, get, is provide a little summary of the um, misclassification rates and the average squared error. So if you look at the uh, lab notes, okay, so what you're going to do here for the last part is just make a little chart. Uh, so you have nine different models.
or you have eight models. No, you have nine. Sorry, you have nine. And you want to you want to put in a little chart with the misclassification rates, which should by default be sorted by best to worst, and then also the average squared errors. And so that information for here is um, in the output. Uh, right here. Okay, so these are all the models and these are the misclassification rates and these are the average squared errors. Uh, so I, I just made a little um, spreadsheet to make it easy or to make it clear like this. Okay, so what you can do here is just set up, a, this shouldn't take too long, but it, it's a nice little summary of what you got. Um, so here are the different architectures you tried. And here are the misclassification rates, and they should be sorted by, this is the, the least misclassified to the worst, and then the, the corresponding average squared error. So see how Excuse me, Professor, in which, in which line in the output? Oh, oh sorry, it um, looks like it starts on line 127. You see that? Uh, yes. Yeah, so these, let me see if I can select them here. Or let me, let me just do this one first. Okay, so these should be your, um, I think they should be this, yeah, so your, your misclassification rates, um, on line 127, your output should be these ones. So you can just double check that you got some of the same numbers. Um, the This one should be the least, the lowest misclassification rate, which is the ORB FEQ of 0 0.201, I mean, 0 0.20168. Yes. Yeah, right. NR, NRB FUN should be 0 0.20474. Uh, NRB FEQ should be 0 0.20550. NRB FEW should be 0 0.20626. Uh, NRB FEV should be 0 0.21932. NRB FEH should be 0 0.21085. NRB, oh, sorry, ORB FUN should be 0 0.21390. MLP, the default is um, 0 0.21543, and then the, the linear model, the worst one, uh, the, the most misclassified, misclassified rate-wise is 0 0.23606. So it should be all that, uh, all the information should be in these lines, starting in 127 of the um, output window. And then the corresponding average squared error is right here, the next, the next thing. Okay, so it's sort they sorted it by misclassification rate, but the average squared error uh, might be a little bit different in ranking, but you should get these numbers, 0 0.15298 all the way to 0 0.17629. Um, so you can make a little chart, but these should be your numbers. Okay. All right, so everybody, everybody sees that information there? Yes. Okay. Okay, so let's, we'll come back to this in a second. Um, so you can close the output window. You can go back to it for the, uh, the table. Uh, but let's go ahead and we've, we've finished the, the analysis for question two. So what you want to do is make a right click it and create model package. And you can put the name like this. Uh, first name, last name, assignment one, Titanic. All right. 
and I hit OK. So we got that, and then you want to save it as an SPK file so you can submit that for your assignment. So you can right click it once it finishes the model package over here, uh, and then save as somewhere. Okay, so first name, last name, then assignment one. Titanic for the Titanic data. All right, and that's your SBK file for that one. So save that. You're going to turn that in. All right. Um, let's see. Okay, so for the first homework, um, which is going to be due next Monday, if you need more time to do that, is you're, all you're going to do is submit the files we did. Uh, so this one, the SPK file for the fitness from question one, you're going to email me this one, the SPK file for Titanic, and then just finish that, that spreadsheet by, by making the chart. And it doesn't have to look exactly like this, but um, something like this. Okay, where you just make a little chart in Excel, um, shouldn't take too long, of the different types of architectures with the corresponding misclassification rate and the average squared error. And you can send me that um, Excel file as well in, in, this, in the same name. Okay, like that. Um, just your name and then assignment one, Titanic. So for the first homework, two SPK files and one uh, Excel file. Right, and just email those to me uh, with your names on the files by next Monday. Yeah. Okay. So everyone, everyone clear on what to what to turn in for the homework? Yes. Okay. Perfect. All right. So that's uh, those are due next week, and. Um, if you like, if you signed off or missed something, I'll, I'll I'll make it. I'll save this this video because we're recording, and I'll make a YouTube page or something where you can watch it later if you, if you need it. Uh, I'll try to figure that out. But we're we're recording this, so just in case you missed something, uh, or got you know your Wi-Fi kicked you off, you can you can see that. Okay, and then just for the hybrid online section, you don't have to turn anything in here, but uh, for the independent stuff, you can do this. So you can read. Um, in the first textbook, so T1 refers to this. All right, so if you go to Blackboard, all right, so if you go to Blackboard and you go to Course Text, okay, and these are the, this is T1, T2, T3. Um, if you click on the first one, the first reading, um, T1, there it is. Okay, so you can just read um, chapter 1.1 to 1.4 uh, to go along with this, this material. All right, so there you go, 1.1 um, to 1.4. And if you also want to read, you can read 5.1 to 5.2. Uh, excuse me, Professor, this is under uh, hybrid online week one? Yeah. Oh, so uh, no. Oh, so, no, this is, a, this is just in the study guide. Okay, in the form study guide. Yeah, so the study guide just tells you exactly what to do. So the homework assignment, 
and then what to do for your independent hybrid online. So you, I'm just showing you like uh, you can read chapters in the T1. You can read chapters 1.1 to 1.4 and also 5.1 to 5.2 in this, this textbook. Okay, and there there's 5.1. Okay, and then here's some more on, on radial bias function networks, 5.1 to 5.2. Okay, so this, if you if you read these, you don't have to submit anything, but uh, if you read these sections, it'll kind of reinforce what we learned today uh, in in the Enterprise Miner. And then there's some videos you can watch too when you get a chance, and those are in the Hybrid Online section. So the four videos for neural networks, uh, let me just show you where they are. Okay, if you click on, in, in Blackboard, if you click on weekly module, uh, week one, hybrid online, and then stat quest. Okay, these are the videos um, that'll kind of reinforce the ideas as well. Um, so neural networks one, neural networks two, neural networks, networks three, and neural networks four. So these are under hybrid online, I mean, weekly module, week one, hybrid online, and then stack quest. Okay, so these four videos should correspond uh, to these. Okay, so that's basically what I'd, I'd like you to do for this week. Is you're you're probably mostly done with the, the homework assignment, and so you can turn in uh, the two homework assignment questions by email next Monday, and just submit those four files. And then for your independent uh, hybrid online, you don't need to turn this in, but you can read these these sections of the T1 textbook and then watch those videos that are posted on Blackboard. All right, sound good? For the, for the exit sheet, uh, we have to do like chart or what? Uh, I'm sorry, what was, the, what was the question? For the exit sheet, Excel sheet. Oh, oh, yeah. Just so, just the summary of the. Uh, I'll show you what Excel sheet. Okay. Yeah. So if just we, table, or can we we can draw a chart. Um. You can you can draw a chart. Yeah, you can. But I I just did it in the norm. Like I just did it like this. So just to, in Excel, okay. you can just show a, a summary of the the nine architecture types you tried, and the corresponding misclassification rates and average squared errors from the the results. Yeah. Kind of like it's just a summary, like an easier way to see what what was in the results, uh, and that way you can okay. see the you're, you're basically finishing the chart uh, that was blank in in the uh, the lab notes, so it should look basically something like this. Okay. 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 All right. Um, Okay, so first assignment, the three files, the two SBK files and then the Excel file, just the summary of the chart. And then the independent stuff you can do when you get a chance, uh, read the textbook chapters and, and watch the videos. All right, so everyone good on that? Yes, clear. Yes. Okay, yes. all right, perfect. Um, oh. Okay, I think uh, that might wrap it up for today. Um, yeah, all right, and I think every, somebody got kicked off a few times, but everybody was here at, at some point. So there were seven. There's 16 people now, including myself. But there were 17. So it, I'll give everyone full attendance for the first week. Uh, I don't need to take roll because everybody was here, and we're good for that. So. Um, and again, I'm, I'm recording this video, so I'll, I'll try to figure out how to save it and and post it to YouTube or something. So if you want to see it, I'll, I'll let you know where it is. Uh, but there is a recording that exists in case you, you missed something. But yeah, I think, uh, think that's going to be it for today, unless there's any questions. Just uh, submit those homework assignments 
and do the reading and, the, and watch the videos. Uh, and then I'll see you next week at the same time, 6 o'clock, uh, in WebEx. And then hopefully week three, we'll be back in person in, in our classroom. So I think, uh, I think that's all I got for today. And thank you all for coming. And we had 100% attendance. Um, and have a great week. And I'll see you next Monday via WebEx. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Professor. Oh, thank you.